All right, I'll get my screen up. All right, welcome everybody. Um, just a reminder, again, you are in the introduction to the RFC, the request for comments. Um, we are going to be talking about documentation and communication today. Um, a bit of a different subject for me. Normally, these camps is highly technical, um, so bear with me today. I tried to pick the appropriate motif for my slides, kind of bare, kind of connected, contrasting from earlier, where a lot of shiny pictures and things and demos and stuff. But um, for those that uh, don't know me, uh, my name is Shane McKinney. I'm a technical architect lead of Stanford Web Services. Um, been with this group for uh, a little over nine years now, and uh, I'm up in Squamish, BC, which is just uh, above Vancouver, uh, so north of the border. If I get a little bit pixelated, I talk funny, I go slow, It's to, they're just taxing it customs at the border. Um, so you can ask me to slow down or repeat things. Um, I also really like highly engaging um, presentations. So the more questions you ask me, the easier it is for the presentation. So please put up your hand, add it to the chat um, comments. I'm, I'm super happy to have a conversation um, on this day. This is a good format for it. All right, what's an RFC? Yeah, it's documentation. It's a document. It's, uh, it's, it can be big, it can be small, um, but uh, it's your document. Um, and what it can do is it can help you standardize communication, provide some transparency in your work. Uh, it can encourage collaboration, get some feedback. You get decision logs in there, um, and you can also get consensus. So that's a lot of things like a document, a bunch of words do, but it's really important. Um, the um, the encouragement of a writing culture in your group too, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, um, is also highly important, um, especially as groups grow or teams build or you're into larger, uh, larger groups or you've got more than one person working on something. Um, it's the, There's some stories and there's some things I've been reading about how even smaller groups intentionally wrote things down early uh, in different formats so they can reflect back on it um they had that history that culture that practice already on things so um for me this has um uh, been a journey to uh, get into the rfc process and to really start to utilize it for my types of communication not only with my team but other teams uh, across campus and individuals uh, it's been uh, transformative in my work um as somebody who's um kind of overseeing a little bit, um, but also for others to just really be able to comment and make their um, make the things that are important to them know. But we're gonna get into that. Uh, just a little quick history because we got to do the boring background stuff. Um, an RFC was invented a long time ago. A gentleman by the name Steve Crocker, um, working on something called a ARP net. You may have heard of that. It's it was a fad at the time. It's kind of now, yeah, yeah. It's been around for a bit. Um, but these have been uh, RFCs have been officially adopted um, by the uh, the Internet. Uh, what are these guys called again? The Internet Engineering Task Force. That's the one. Um, who are trying to put some boundaries on the web? So I've been doing this web thing for about fifteen years, and there's definitely a bit of a wild, wild west feel um, that is starting to go away. Well, it's very much now, very, very much gone, I think. But for a long, long time, it's very, very wild, wild west. Anybody can do anything and everywhere. That's part of the magic and the fun of it a little bit. However, when you're trying to coordinate and collaborate, that makes things tough, um, especially when you're doing things on a global scale. That is bad. Uh, so request for comments um, has become an official format for them. Um, we're going to just talk a bit, uh, talk about RFCs a little bit more generally. So it's um, it's being used by a lot of people uh, now. And so uh, Steve may have started it. Um, this is kind of, it might be small on your screen, I'm sorry, but there's a whole bunch of big tech companies and small ones like Airbnb, Cazzo, Cisco, um, Meta, I think is in there. I don't know if they're like Facebook or not or whatever, and Uber, but there's some other ones that are in there too. So big and small companies. Um, I got this from the pragmatengineer.com and he did put that nice little asterisk saying, this is not a complete list. Um, so the gentleman put out an unofficial Twitter poll uh, and got a whole bunch of feedback on these kinds of things. So, um, and it does have that name in there, RFC-like engineering planning process. I'm gonna get into that a little bit because engine uh, RFCs, are they just for technical people? I'm a technical person. 
I am going to talk about today from a bit of a technical perspective, but are they? No, you can use them for all sorts of things. You can use them for UI design. You can use them for a ton of other things. So um, it is a communication tool for you and you can really make it the thing that you need. But why do you think you need one? Um, pull some quotes here from HashiCorp um, that I thought were quite huge. So HashiCorp was one of the individuals that responded um, to that uh, the, um, that unofficial poll. But uh, I thought these were really good quotes, and I'm going to do what bad presenters do. I'm going to read from the slide. Um, and the process of writing uh, encourages thoughtfulness. It is incredibly valuable for everyone to have an easy act to have easy access to context on what decision it, on what a decision is and how it was made, including the options that we decided against. That's this is great. This is inclusive. This is transparency. Uh, this is availability. This is something that you have done and have shown that you've thought about it. Because a lot of decisions are made like, uh, by very smart people who put a lot of thoughts into things. They talked about alternatives and reasons why they didn't do things, but they don't document the, that. They didn't talk about why they didn't do something. They didn't make it available. And then you run into a problem later and somebody goes, well, that was a stupid decision. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the person's missing a point. Maybe there was a reason for it and now they're going against the grain. Um, sure. Uh, HashiCorp's writing culture is our superpower. We get to see how our colleagues think, emulate those processes and get smarter ourselves. I thought that was great. Uh, I really like this quote in the sense that I get smarter the more I read. Um, I read a lot of code. I see a lot of patterns, a lot of practices. Like um, when individuals are able to put their thoughts down on paper and share those things, that really does help others. Um, you get to learn a ton uh, from those kinds of things. So I thought that was great. Um, and that's once you're capturing somebody's brain is not easy to do. Uh, writing is one of the reasons why HashiCorp can successfully operate across time zones. It's tempting for teams to work in one region to make decisions synchronously and skip a step where options are written down. Reminding ourselves that all communication should be inclusive of everybody, no matter where they are based, and it uh, is an important factor of building a resilient team in a remote company. I thought this was, uh, they're talking about a big company, and I think this was a quote before the pandemic, but I think this is even more important today, that um, you are likely work in a distributed group who are having to have several remote staff um, who are could be in time zones. You could have overseas or offshores or other teams, um, being inclusive uh, and having a culture of the writing um, allows those individuals to be involved. Um, and you don't have to always battle the get everybody in the room at the same time problem, um, which is challenging. Uh, or just uh, for the fact is that um, it's, this information should be available to everybody. So this, these are kinds of things that I think are great. Uh, standardization and communication uh, is helpful. Um, so, you know, Stanford has a good habit of documentation. We like to write things down. Um, so our culture of writing isn't, is, is good. Uh, overall, isn't bad. However, um, the type of documentation we have and where it is and how it's formatted, who's it shared with and how it's received or delivered or sign-offs or approvals, that, that's all over all over the place right so writing things down is a good start um so the rfc is a process too and i'm going to talk about that process it's not just the document um and it encourages these things so we get some standardization of communication um and it's really good to uh, have some understanding and be able to have a, an expectation of what type of information you're supposed to share and supposed to receive so writing things down and what you feel at the time is is good, definitely. Uh, having some standardization or something you can lean on will help you a little bit better as well. Transparency, I'm a big fan of transparency. I like to work in an open box. I think it's really, really helpful. I'm, I'm okay uh, with people questioning things. I get better at it. Um, I want that type of question. I want things to be available to others. I want them to grow, to learn. Um, I want to grow and learn. Um, so it's, I think it's an important value. Um, this process and the document also solicits feedback. So the whole intent, the whole title of it is a request for comments. Like you want people's opinions on these things. So you want feedback on something. 
So this isn't just documentation saying this is the way it is. That's not communication. That is documentation. This is communication in the sense that we want you to respond to it. You want you to reflect on what is being written down and to give us feedback. This is shifting thinking and planning further to the left of a project. And the more you do that, the lower the costs for the things that you're doing, the less bugs there are, the better the final product there. And this, again, I'm coming from a technology perspective. This is useful in other things too. Um, when you're planning, you're practicing anything. Um, the more thought you put into it at the beginning, and there's, I guess, there's trades. So I shouldn't say you should, shouldn't spend all your time planning because then you, you have to have some doing. Um, but uh, the more you do shift left, the better your, your final outcomes will be. Um, it's also a document um, that you will have a public record of decisions and change. Um, and this is a good thing. You can look back on why, and you can look back on the reasons of why things, and that's not to point blame. That is not to be like, well, this person said, or to, that was it. like, no. These things are learning opportunities. These things are reasons why it gives you reflection periods, that opportunity to grow and understand. Um, and these documents too aren't intended to be living documents. They're ephemeral. Um, they, they live forever, but once they're closed, they're closed. They don't ever get updated. You've created a new one at this point. So it's good to have a point of record in time. It also allows you to do things asynchronously. Writing things down, having it in a shareable place um, will help facilitate omni-channel and multiple time zones and uh, those other challenges you have by being remote or having multiple teams or availability or people's time or uh, even language barriers if you had to, uh, you could get translations of things. Um, so it's it's really uh, helpful um, to get asynchronous communication, which can free up and make things move quicker. It can also slow things down. This, this is not a fast process by any means. Um, so if you're looking for immediate snap decisions, this might not be your best choice uh, of decision-making framework. However, um, you can do things asynchronously and it can potentially uh, make it better uh, if you're having trouble, cha having tr challenges getting individuals together. Uh, and then you can also use it for approvals uh, as well. So you don't have to. A lot of these things are just, you're looking for feedback or comments, um, but you can also definitely use these things to get approvals to move forward. Um, but the authors should always make sure that whatever approval or that they are getting, that they do have the sponsorship needed from whatever stakeholder or manager leadership or whatever it is that they need to get to actually do the work in place. This this isn't your way to actually like see like look everybody agrees I'm doing the work now no that's not quite how that works but it could help you in that argument all right who's in charge who called this meeting is there an agenda um, anyone can rate it honestly um, the idea is that you're looking for feedback you're looking for comments you're looking to get people informed um, but it's usually somebody who's in charge um, of a larger core group or something, you know, um, I'm saying it's usually, but in trying to encourage others. Um, and it doesn't have like these RFCs, they don't have to be big. They could be on a simple, small thing. Like, you know what, I, I want your feedback on changing this color uh, of blue on this button. And I think it will be more inclusive to X group or more accessible because of Y reason. And you need to talk to several individuals about it because it changes the design patterns it changes the uh, design system the accessibility guidelines like it could have a lot of impact that's that thing but it's a small request you just need an individual so anybody can bring that to the table um but there should be a champion and i like to use that word and when we talk about somebody who's responsible uh, for something but so also, also somebody who really wants this to, to happen so you do need to have a document champion um somebody who who is taking the leadership over it they don't have to be the only person writing it in fact collaborating uh, on an rfc document is even better um but there should, should be somebody that is continuing to drive it forward that is your champion <laughs> okay so how does the request for comment process work so it's not a document, it's a process, you must trust the process. There are a few steps involved. So you gotta write something. So you gotta create a document. 
get it right. Then you have to share that document with the individuals you want feedback from. So the request for comments needs to go out. You share this asynchronously with individuals ahead of time, giving them a chance to look at it. Then you present it to them officially. And then this could be in a video conference. It could be over the telephone or, or some formal presentation where you are delivering the document to them. Then there's a feedback cycle after that. Um, and then there's an approval and closure of the document. So you got to write something down. So you want to start with a template and you got to create that template. Uh, there's lots of templates out there, it turns out. Um, lots of hints. There's some good structure. So uh, I've got links. So if you look at the agenda in, in the sessions, you can find uh, do, 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 where's my thing. There it is. The slides are here. And I thought they had put the slides in. I will put the slides up. I guess they're gone. Um, so you can follow along at home. Um, let me just do that real quick. We're going to do some live editing. I thought I put those in there, but maybe not. Um, but I'm going to put this in so you can have these links uh, on your. Uh, NFL. It's going to be super fast. Glad you get to watch that. OK, good. So I can type and talk. Um, so they're there. You can follow along. There's some links uh, in this document. Um, I'm pretty sure I shared it with everybody in the world, too, which is also an important thing. Yep. Um, there's a good list here. Go take a look. Um, take inspiration from these things. Um, there's really good examples. Uh, create your own um, template. Be thoughtful when you're creating your own that you are giving yourself um, thought-provoking um, things to react to. So head, head in, uh, headlines that are in there to help you also think about what it is that you're trying to express or get feedback on. Um, so there's some details uh, around that, but yeah, have a, have a look. Um, and again, I'll show you one that I put together um, for this as well. Uh, so step one, you start writing. You fill out your document um, with all the information that you feel is important. Um, you want to get, uh, you do want to get into the weeds of this stuff. Like you want to have details in here. You don't want to be the so verbose that nobody will read it. So again, there's a balance. Um, I would recommend a TLDR, too long didn't read section uh, for those uh, who need it but you want it um, to have the information that is important to you and for others to react to uh, as well. So things that may affect them uh, or things that they want, you want them to comment on, you should be explicitly writing down. Um, not like I need you to answer this question, but like, this is the change that I'm looking for. Can you tell me how important this is or what is important to you about this? Um, you should write it in a public space. Oh, Cynthia's got a question. How is this different from a JIRA comment or even a Google Doc comment? This can be in a Google Doc. You can use comments in Google Docs to get your feedback in. Absolutely. Um, JIRA, it might be another place where you could share these things. You could have a JIRA template or a Confluence template if that's a good place for you and that's where your audience is. Absolutely fine. I've used Google Documents because I can add and embed things and link things and share them out with multiple groups. Um, but yeah, Jira, Confluence, all totally fine. Uh, you want something that allows commenting um, in some way that's on there. So uh, have it in a place where you can do that. So there's, you can pick your, pick your poison on which tool for that one. And then tie to the actual work. That's yeah. the other thing, like that connection there. Yeah, so yeah, you keep these things organized. Um, in the official RFC spec, they're enumerated. Enumerated? Yeah. Um, they're numbered and, and um, basically those, the, and it's uh, sequential and they're an ID uh, for each one. Um, okay, so you're going to write a bunch of stuff down that you want feedback on. You can do it with a partner. Um, so you can already have some sort of collaboration discussion that's already there, which is great. Um, but then your audience, you need to share it ahead of schedule. Give it to them early. Give them some time to digest it. Like feedback doesn't just happen after you present something and immediately at their reaction to it in that same meeting. Like it's hard. You're not going to get the in-depth, thoughtful feedback that you're looking for. Um, however, don't expect anybody to actually read it. Uh, you're going to send it out early. People are busy. They're going to wait for that presentation. So this is part of the process. You're going to give them an opportunity to. And if you can get that feedback in early, Absolutely awesome. Great. However, I 
it's really hard to get things under people's noses uh, realistically. So uh, send it out early uh, as part of your agenda and meeting. Cynthia, yeah. Do you give people deadlines uh, for for um, commenting? Yes, and I'll get into that. Um, <laughs> so don't expect any action, feedback, even response until you present it. Um, and there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, so you can allow some eye time at the beginning of the document for people to read it. So you can actually have 20 minutes in front where you just like, okay, everybody read. And they can digest it there and they can add comments as they go. Um, but the idea is that you do want to formally present it to them and you can do it through a video conference or in person or some way. Um, but you give them a chance to, to look at it early, then you're gonna formally present it to them. Um, so you can add your context, your bias, your sway, whatever you need to do um, during that as well. And you can add those tidbits, the verbal communication that you would likely do anyhow, but you also have a written version of it, which is good. Um, keep that presentation short and on the point. Um, don't let this go on and on and on and lose interest. Uh, let the individuals get what you're trying to get their feedback on and take the time to digest, understand it, reflect, and then comment on it. So um, don't expect it, uh, feedback immediately. This is where your, um, your feedback cycle comes. So asynchronous commenting, I titled here, I think I had feedback in the other title. That's another slide, that's bad. but. Um, this is where you have your feedback side. And this is where you put the deadline on. So then you have, I need this decision by this, this window. So you have one week, two weeks, whatever is okay in your world. And, you know, give them more in a day, you know, find the balance in there. Um, but give them some time to reflect on it and to make comments. Some may, some may not, um, but you've given them all the opportunity to be prepared. And if they choose not to, um, if this is an organizational problem and the communication like people are unwilling to work, if you've got problems working with other groups, um, then you can raise that up because um, you've done everything that you possibly can to get stuff up. But generally, you might need to send them a reminder. Um, but this is an opportunity like you've given them all the you've empowered them to really understand and to comment and reflect on things that are important to them about the change or the thing that you're introducing. So. Uh, you'll go through, you'll get comments and this feedback cycle, and then you can continue to, to edit and work the document. So com questions will come up to look into, feedback will happen. You can change your approach. So one of the sections that you may have is the uh, implementation details. You will adjust that as you go. People will reflect about, oh, you can't do that because, or what about this option? And like those types of things. And you'll document those as questions and comments in the document and you'll change stuff and you'll get it. And at some point, you got to call it done. So you got to close it. You'll get to a point where it's good enough. Uh, you'll come either come to a decision. Um, there's a, a section in the RFC template that I have that's the open comment section. Um, and it's OK to have open questions or open comments left at the end of your document. You may get enough feedback or enough actionable discussion uh, or none. No, 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 nobody just, minds the change you can just go ahead and do it um you'll get enough and you close it you say okay we're done that's it this has been uh that's not necessarily approved but the feedback has had the chance to have that type of communications there we've made a decision we've documented we've done it if we want to change something else or something similar we'll open up a new one um but you close the document it's a point in time. It doesn't mutate any further. Um, and you keep it public and you make sure everybody knows. Okay. Yes, Cynthia, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you got you muted now. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was saying it's a Shay and Cynthia conversation today. Um, it sounds like these documents, it, there's a benefit to having these um, RFCs around a small decision or a small question, right? So if if something comes up in the document where it's like, well, maybe this is another question, I would say start another document, right? And then um, is that what I'm I'm seeing nods? Okay. Yeah. Well, just no, honestly, on this one, if I, and not to interject on your question, but um, they can yeah. be bigger or small. If you're looking for feedback, okay. it's easier to digest something small um, to think about it and to provide feedback and you can move it along quicker. 
I've used this document for very large change, um, stuff that is significantly impactful for multiple groups and has like business and financial ramifications. And I need multiple groups to chime in on about the next step because one, we've had multiple teams and a certain team would like to make a decision, but it has effects on others and we needed feedback uh, for those other groups. And then we also needed those that are paying the bills to understand the amount of change that's there. And it was a large change. It was organizational type of change. And so those that are paying the bills, they need to understand the trades or the differences or the costs associated with that. So the technical stuff gets sorted out, the process stuff gets sorted out, and the financial stuff. And that's a big document. But you could also ask for color blue change on a button. And that's okay too. <laughs> like you can go to that level. Um, and that might just be fine. So I like smaller things because they're easier to digest. Um, but sometimes you have a big change and you need to write down a lot of stuff so that people understand that this is a big deal. And that's just what it is. Uh, so steps again, or write stuff down, share it out early, officially present it with people. So tell them, write it down, tell them you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. Tell them again, ask for the feedback, close it. Uh, some things you may want to include in your template. This here, some of the prompts, maybe we're just AI now. Uh, a list of stakeholders and approver, approvals, um, individuals that you need to have reviewed things or want to have contribution from. Uh, any alternatives that you may have thought about or have approached or look at uh, whether you are or are not going those, are they viable or not viable, risks associated with things, goals and non-goals of the document or the thing that you're trying to do. Like if I'm trying to say I want to change this color blue, like your non-goals are uh, to improve the performance, you might want to call it out for whatever reason. That's a silly example, but uh, any links to relevant documentation around things like a product requirement document, functional requirement documents, design documents, other specs, like a lot of these things you're requesting feedback are driven from a needs that you've been given from some other portion of the project or process that's there. So you are reacting to something as it is, and you need feedback, you need decision making, you need to know what's going on. Um, Questions that you may have and any outstanding questions that you have. So like you may get to a point where like, we just need to learn more. We can't go forward. We just have to do some research. We've got more questions and these are our questions. And then you'll come back at something else. Uh, definitely put some dates on stuff. Um, you know, you don't want to leave these things open forever. Um, and then your de definition of success is. So what does the final, um, final outcome look like? What does it mean to be successful um, after all the feedback has been put in? Uh, so this is my engineering template. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Cynthia. Would you add things like dependencies or maybe um, uh, budget? Yeah, absolutely. If you got restrictions or... or um, Does that make you risk? Yeah, it could be yeah. part of the risk. Yeah. Um, you could be looking for feedback on you want to do this, but you think it might be expensive and we might push up against the budget and not have anything left for part two. Like that could be something you want feedback on. Absolutely. Um, so I put this one together. Um, this is um, some, I've got some feedback on it uh, from others um, as well about what's important for them to understand. Um, this is also from reading a whole bunch of RFCs that were on the, um, uh, just out there on um, part of also the pragmatic, the, uh, website, programmer, programmer website, but also um, various different other resources. There's templates, lots of articles sort of written around the subject. None of them are like standards as far as like, this is an RFC template for engineering. This is an RFC template for UI, UX. This is done to, there's different cultures and different needs in the organization. So you've, you've got to sort of establish that. But once established, then the organization has that template and they use that to communicate. Um, and some of them use it religiously as well, like this is the method in which the cross-team uh, cross collaboration happens. Um, so, anyway. um, so I've got a title. Uh, so this is my template. I'm just going to walk through just 
give you an idea of why it is the way it is. I will, I'm open to feedback as well, so if you have. Um, but I generally, I'll like, I'll label something like thing stuff. Um, something like that. I'll give it a number, um, put it in a drive folder. So this is a number for the project that it's on. So it'll start at one, but you don't have to. Um, document champion, that's usually me. Um, so I'm going to be on there. Status, so I'll move this along as I go. So when it's open, it means I'm writing it um or in progress like open it's like i just started it in progress means i'm still working on it in review means i've delivered it um and people are commenting and then done means like it's done we're not moving as far as locked basically at that point i keep a list of dates presented or and like when i share things as well so individuals have a timeline of like how this document has moved so as i share it out i will put down a date saying i shared it with these people on this date i presented it to these people on this date and then this one they and then the comments and stuff are logged themselves so i don't need to like do that but um the milestones of this um, document kind of get logged as well uh links to any sort of relevant or required documentation that's in there so if i've got a design file i've got the business need i've got the functional requirement i'll link to those um, and then I'll have a list of people that I want involved. So um, they may or may not need a signature for this document. So I do use this one for approvals a lot of times. If I don't want these things, I just pull them all out. I can just, you know, you don't need to keep everything in here, but I'll list out the individuals. I'll list out whether or not like I want their approval to call this thing done. Um, and then I can also give them a date when I need that by. Again, none of these things actually guarantee you you actually have the approval. This is just you getting your document closed. Uh, TLDR, show them, tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them why this is important. Um, why should we do this? Why, why is this work important? And then the how. How do I propose to solve it? Um, so this is this is your implementation. Um, and you can get in, and I encourage you to get into the weeds of like, what is it that you're trying to solve and how you're trying to solve it? So get detailed in here on this one. So this is the, the important chunky bit. Uh, also outline the goals and non-goal goals. So like, what is it that I'm trying to solve and what am I not trying to solve that's in here? Um, often try to draw these wonderful colored boxes to help give it an overview or a visual understanding of something. And again, like I've got these headings as optional. If you don't have that, or you don't need it, I just rip it out. So something to support like what it is that I'm trying to do. So this is the verbal, and then this is you know supporting documentation, basically. Uh, if we have actual design files, so again, we had links up here to stuff, but if we have um, we need to show more than that. I can show you an actual one where we have a bunch of these. Um, but the actual design documentation as well, so I can put that in there so people can visually see. So if I'm talking about a UI change, I can put them here, that's in here. Um, this is a good section. This has been very helpful. Um, this has been very helpful for me to A, think through the thing, because um, I'm trying to think of the various different edge cases and so likely scenarios and unlikely scenarios and everything in between like you don't need to try to catch like just the edge cases or the weirdness sometimes you just want to talk about the happy bath um and that's good and that actually has been thought provoking for a lot of individuals they go well that's not how i thought that would be and then they provide feedback uh, on the happy path that you thought was normal and you go, oh i didn't think of that but that's the purpose that's the whole point of it because i'm technical we have apis and data storage so like i'll list out the stuff that is impacted or needed or reflected in things. So if I've got needs in there, um, pseudocode has actually been really helpful um, as well. So as we've talked about the implementation of technical things, I can be like, this is the payload I expect. These are the fields and the formats and the data types like I expect. So talking to other technical teams, we are able to collaborate. I know code in a Word document, but it's something, it helps. That's why it's pseudocode. Alternatives, alternatives are good to call out. So say you, you had a vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, why vendor A was better for this and why vendor B was better for this. If you're expecting an SLA on something, like uh, if you want, like this is a good one. This could just be expectations um, that are in there. So um, like I expect after doing this thing that it will be operational all the time. Sometimes that's not understood. Some people don't think or worry about that. And it's just, 
part of another system and it's got different tooling or whatever. Uh, and again, dependencies, uh, load and performance impact, security is always a consideration. I should probably, I'm seeing Carol looking here, I'm thinking I should be probably adding accessibility constraints or accessibility concerns. Uh, things like metrics and monitoring, customer support, that's another thing. For those of you who are in CXS, uh, customer support considerations is your responsibility to think about. Your changes to the work that you do and your team does um, will have customer support implications. Don't want to pile up tickets <laughs> for individuals. We want to have a good product. Uh, the definition of success, risks, and then any assigning questions that's in there. So, um, and again, a lot of these are optional and they're not always followed 100%. So like, I don't always use all of these and sometimes I change them. Sometimes I don't have a, um, the how are we going to solve it. Sometimes I have, uh, or how do you propose? Sometimes I like how this works hitting. Um, so there's differences in there, but. That's just the one I, I've used for that. But, um, so th I encourage you to go and find something that's out there. So I have a question for you. Yeah, shoot. Um, with, the, with your, um, w once you give this to somebody, where do they put the comments? Is it always just gonna be comments, Google comments, or do they actually write in the document? Let's see if I got one I can share. Yeah. The Thunder Finance, this way we go. Um, so this is one that I did with collaboration. So this included the uh, business technology service, BTS and enterprise technology. Um, and we're collaborating on API endpoints. Um, so a big document, we had an actual design about what we're planning on showing, but we wanted to talk about what is the design of the API to support this. Um, and I think I probably closed a lot of the comments, but um, I want to add, I just want to see them. I guess they're here. Um, yeah, it looks like I closed them. There's comment history. There we go. The comments are right here, yeah. So we have a history. So I closed some that were done, but the comments are here. They're highlighted. We do talk about it. Um, I do change stuff. Um, so like he mentioned that, well, what about these things? And I said, okay, great. I'm going to add a whole new section. Somewhere else up here, I did that. Um, Hano pseudocode in this one. Um, we talked about all the APIs and things, but... The comments here are, are in this thread. Um, they're here, they're captured. This is the most organized, searchable way of finding them out. <laughs> you probably can figure out a better way. This is working for now. Um, I'm sure there's other tools and tooling that are out there um, that could be better. Confluence, maybe, those that use it. But I, I got a large amount of feedback. Like I, this, this, These are all things that were important to multiple people that they were worried about or needed to see different. So you keep the comments or do you close them out? So you, you might, free, can, you, that what happened, then you lose yeah. lose the, the thread or? They're still there. They're just in the closed section, right? They're not just immediately there. So like they're still here. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. So you can find them. They're just underneath this button. Oh, so, so you don't resolve them. You, you keep These them. These ones are you... closed. So this one's been marked as resolved here. Okay. But, I didn't know you could go back and look at them. Okay. Yeah, they're still all there. So the common history is, is still there. And you also get it. And with this, there's also revision history as well. So you can see uh, that's the activity. But there's somewhere in here. You get a revision history. So you can actually even look at the history of the document too. So I'm not saying Google Drive documents is the best tool for this, but it is a tool. It's one that I've been using. Um, oh, uh, one more screen share. Uh, so yeah, at the very end of this document, so I, uh, I did put the link into the thing, but um, there's a link out there. So HashiCorp, they've got some templates up there. Uh, there's a list of templates in their pragmatic engineer. Uh, there's a structured and a lightweight RSE process. So kind of what I talked about today, um, they talk about some of the nuances between um, the process, but again, it's write things down, share in advance, present, feedback cycle, done, move along. But it's important to give people time to digest, to understand, to react, to give feedback on what's important. On there. So any questions? And I appreciate the questions that we had uh, that's in there. So yeah, Cynthia, give it a go. 
Yeah, I was curious. Do you still have that um, RFC open? I went, I was curious to see what the decision looks like, and does and do you actually like compile decisions, or what do you do with what do you do with that? Mm. So the decision is basically the document itself. Um, oh. So I've just I've described how we're going to do this here in the how to result. So I've said this is what I want to do, and I got feedback on that. Um, so I said, here's my goals. This is what I'm trying to do. Um, here's the things I'm not trying to do. This is going to look like. Here's all of the um, scenarios. And we had a lot of scenarios and we had a lot of feedback on these scenarios. And the approval was, yeah, this makes sense. I agree that this is the way that it should be solved. I don't have any strong objections to anything in here. My needs are met. My issues are um, have been voiced. I understand what's happening. In there. So, so if there was an objection and it was in the comments as an example, do you go in and just change your document so that it does reflect the decisions? I uh, guess. Yeah. So I'll update the document. So if we have um, we have a reflection or a comment that does require change, and then I guess I will adjust the document to be the um, agreed upon uh, decision that happens. So those could be the, we could go back and forth in comments. Uh, we could be meeting again. Um, but the idea is I, I do want to write the the final outcome of that down and make sure that that is in that product. Because we'll make a little decision along the way to get to that final decision you're looking for. And the, the important one is that final decision. Uh, those little decisions, how you got there, it's great to keep that document. You want to see those as well. You want to have that conversation. But like you really want to document that that final decision. Like this is the agreed upon thing. Um, it's more or less we're there. This is the feedback I got. Or like it doesn't even have to be the agreed. I talk about this as like an approval, um, but we don't even have to. Like you just could be looking for feedback on something, and you say and you get somebody that says no, man, this is no good. I don't like this for X Y Z reasons, and that might be enough. That might be it. You might just close it out, and you might just write down won't do. Uh, somewhere on there um, and that's fine like that's that's also good like you've got to a point where like you didn't go down the path to find out this is a blocker you know ten thousand dollars into the project Jenna I was wondering uh your document looked really really long and I was curious if you start sharing your document before all your thought processes are done or do you um wait com until you're completely done before you share it out <laughs> uh so th that one in particular was a big one um that was a, <laughs> that was a long one there was a lot to detail it was on a this was on a very large piece of functionality on a website that involved three different teams to get right um so there was a lot of details that needed to be um to to communicate because a design decision from one group would impact the performance and the, the amount of hardware another team would have to buy. Um, so um, I tend to get a very verbose document down first before I share it out, and it grows. <laughs> it tends to grow <laughs> after that even. So this started off a bit shorter, um, but I did spend a fair bit of time uh, on it first before sharing it out. Yeah, it takes some time. And again, this, depending on what you're trying to get feedback on, it, and it can be something small, and it doesn't have to be that big. And it honestly could be the color of something, and that's all you want to get back. And that's that's okay. That's you get a decision, you get a log, you get a history. People voice their concerns; they got it. Like you're inclusive. And, um, yeah, no, it's good. Thank you. But yeah, for that long one, that one that one took a while. That one, I think, from start to end, was about six weeks. Um, yeah, I'm wondering like a time crunch if you start thinking about it at, for one day and you really want to get it rolling, you know, and you yeah. might not be able to get all your thought processes out before you start rolling it out. <laughs> yeah, we, we moved the needle on the actual work before it was finally closed because we were getting to a point where we're like we feeling good about this, like it was going like it was going to happen and we were just getting to the details at that point. And so like we've we had a consensus of this much already so we could get going on that part and so like it didn't take us six weeks and we weren't blocked to do anything in those six weeks like we were having that conversation and we were able to keep things moving as well so it, this, this is good to have and what we 
keep talking about shifting left uh, as much as you can in your projects um, early because uh, these things help save time and money over the long run, even though that up front, it takes you more effort, but it can run in parallel or have some overlap with the actual implementations or efforts as well. Thank you. Carol, you got to flip it down. There you go. That, that certainly lets you prototype something and see if it's going to work before you close it too. Yeah, if you get a prototype to help with it, then oh, yeah, awesome. That'd be great. Photoshops are great things to react to. Cynthia. <laughs> I was I was gonna say, um, this is wonderful. Thank you, Shay. I um it's it's one of those things where it's like um habit changing kind of thing that you have to do in your process and just Maybe start with a small thing and then get used to it so you can continue to expand and grow these things. But um, it yeah. is, it takes a lot of time. Like I'm, I come out, out of the code and like, that's where I like, that's my home. That's where I like to be like the right and be in the technical stuff. So like coming up to write these things, um, you know, it's, it, it took some effort and some energy to, to focus, to do that. Um, the other thing I found is um, other people also love to have meetings and don't want to write things down. They want a quick conversation. They have things to do. They've got time um, crunches. They want to get through those decisions. They want to come to you. They'll present something and they'll ask you. To, and they and same. They don't want to have a document that they have to review and read, read and things as well. So that's what I was saying about early. Don't expect immediate feedback and why you need to present it to them um, because it, it is a culture shift and it is a, a behavior and a pattern shift it's not easy for individuals to switch from that high bandwidth just communication to talk um but it has a lot of benefits um so you it's it's going to take time and not everybody's going to buy in not everybody's going to like it um but i still do it <laughs> i'm sorry they're gonna we're gonna work together i'm gonna need and i'm gonna need this and I have been unapologetic about it, and that's been received well enough. <laughs> well, you've obviously seen a lot of value in in doing this. So, to the thing I've been really getting value from is the ability to share it after as well. I've been able to go back and be like, "Oh, this this is how this works." Here, go have it. I've taken one of them and I put it onto a Jira ticket and handed it to a vendor, and they didn't even come to us with a question. They just did the work because it was all written down and thought through. Like I didn't have to write a big Jira ticket. It was there. It was already done. Um, and they they said, thank you. This was the most thorough thing I've ever had. Um, I could just do the work. And they did. And they did it well. And that was that. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was mind boggling. I'm like, but it took a whole bunch of effort to get it to that point, you know, um, whereas you would have that handover with the vendor developer and you would have to talk about things you have back and forth. And that's fine too. That's okay. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but um it's it definitely has value for me to have all these things written down and documented that same document with that vendor did all the work i shared it just today um with an individual wondering if that could also be used for one of their challenges that they're having so that same solution he now has the full information about and can make an informed decision if that's the solution that they're looking for so it was very helpful uh, to have that all just available Shall I keep recording? We're still recording. Yeah, I'm happy. It's happy to sit. Time, so yeah. folks are still hanging out. It's all good. Sorry, Dina, <laughs> I had to interrupt. Yeah, I was thinking that, you know, also it seems to me that the value is in repeating this activity that people get used to looking for that document and expecting that document and they get better at reading it and formulating what's useful to go in there. So it seems like one of those things that you're just only going to get better at with practice. Yeah, I find people scan to look for the things that are important to them and they'll comment on that. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Because a lot of people need to comment on different parts, but I want to make sure that you have a chance to say what's important to you. Speaking of what's important to you, how do you, how do you present it so that you present the important parts without, um, you know, getting too, too detailed 
Uh, kind of like today where like you kind of presented like a, a slide deck almost for me. Like I've given you all the stuff to read. I want to introduce it to you, the high level, the overview, the highlight the things that I think are important uh, as well and, and places where I want individuals to look. I am going over the contents of it, um, but more verbally as the person who created it, like it's here. It's And I'm, I would have that conversation almost naturally as it is when I go to get feedback um, so you would have this type of conversation, but you've got it all written down in details that um, you may not have thought about had come up from the process of writing. Um, so I can go and I can talk through things and I go through each section and I've had to do it in two parts at times because some of them are long. Um, and that's fine, but I do go through it. I'm very linearly just here we go. This is why we're doing it. This is how I propose it. These are the scenarios um, for those that you look at the pseudocode, look at the pseudocode. Here's what it risks. I need you to identify the load and performance impacts. TST needs to comment on support because the help desk is going to be in trouble if we don't. Um, like I'll call stuff like that as I go. Yeah. Uh, if they ask questions verbally, how do you direct them to the document? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think if I do have it written down, I would go look for it and then definitely like here, here's where that is. But um, questions, yeah, honestly, if we can get them um, in verbal nature is great too. And if I can edit the document or change or do things on the fly, that's fine. Um, you're allowed, to, like, the whole idea is you you're, you want the uh, to have fluid uh, feedback and conversations on that. So um, if they want to bring it verbally and then you make a change, Based off of that, you're having an in-person thing. That's that's good. That's okay. But yeah, you should you should not just talk about it and leave it in the air. Uh, it should get back into the document. Cool stuff. I'm uh, glad you think that a whole bunch of words on a Google Drive document is cool stuff. <laughs> Does anyone have a use case where they're like, I'm going to go do this today? Yeah, give it a try. I have a whole bunch of templates that I have in, in GitHub. I'm yeah. like, ooh, maybe we should put this one to a template. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out, because the, the comments are are interesting. You can use GitHub if you wanted to get, because you can highlight things that comment. You can see your revision history. If you had this in mind, like you could do this whole process in a version control system if you want. Oh, oh, I was thinking, well, the, the the templates I've been using are for Jira tickets, but oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's like you put it into a Jira ticket, so I because that's where I usually am. And yeah, start by just making your own in whatever medium is comfortable, and you know, um, that's that's the starting point is to get yourself a template going, figure out what it is that you're looking for feedback for, what's important to you, and then try it and then you're going to change it and it might not be a hundred percent but like you'll have a template you'll have that thought-provoking um guide for you and then individuals will start to expect to see those things over time so that's where you start and then yeah try it try it yeah do something small because these things can get big <laughs> well thank you shay yeah, well, thank you for joining on Thursday uh, with all the other competing interesting things that were going on today. So I appreciate you choosing this one.